Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. Today we've got the full review of the Mauser M18 long range chassis rifle. And this one is 6.5 Creedmoor, which in itself will make it popular alone. So stick with me, we've got some film footage of shooting, we've got some technical readouts, technical data. You can always log on to the website you know, with, uh, with Mauser and look at their own specification list because I'm not going to bore you with something that you can read yourself. I'm going to give you my personal independent opinion of this rifle compared to all the other rifles I use every day of the week. So stick with me, please like, subscribe, comment. Thanks for watching. Length of pull is 345 millimeters or 13 and a half inches. Overall length of the rifle is 1105 millimeters or 43 and a half inches. Overall weight is 4.86 kilograms or 10.7 pounds. The rifle is threaded at the muzzle M18 for a muzzle brake or sound moderator. The barrel is 22mm in diameter and is the usual Mauser cold hammer forge structure. The chassis is an MDT Oryx unit. It's fully free floating and incredibly stiff with underside M-lock compatibility and you can see the QR stud anchor points at the front here. This is stiff from all shooting positions and there is no flexibility at all which can affect any kind of zero or positional hold. Polymer side plates are fitted to the aluminium chassis which give it a warmer touch and it's a little bit gentler on the hands. This is an ideal way to build a rifle in my opinion. It's got a barricade stop for the PRL shooters. The magazine is a 10 round unit, it stacks in a single column and is Mauser's own proprietary unit. A 20 MOA Picatinny rail is supplied fitted to the gun. The trigger shows a tiny amount of creep on its single stage pull, but it's very predictable and quite consistent in use, so I was happy shooting it. The magazine is Mauser's own proprietary unit, stacks in two columns, it's a 10 round, plus one in the chamber if you want in this 6.5 Creedmoor. The bolt handle is extremely well accessible. There's loads of leverage on the super long bolt handle and it's a 60 degree lift. There's a plunger ejector and a strong extractor. The rifle also shows strong primary extraction force to tear the case from the firing, to tear the case from the chamber. The trigger is a single stage unit, shows some adjustability and this one broke at 700 grams straight from the box. It's 99% crisp and very predictable in use. Although an AR-15 style grip, the reach to trigger is actually better than usual with about 70 millimeters from the throat to the blade itself. I've found this extremely comfortable and prefer it to the more vertical grips that some people prefer for the PRS, PRL type rifles. I still like to shoot from prone more and the angle helps my positional. The side of the chassis also shows slight thumb ribs so you can go for the thumb up side of the gun feel for trigger. 
you have to lift the cheek piece out to extract the bolt. But this isn't a huge problem, and in a competition situation, you'll be using a breech flag anyway. There are no markings shown for returning to position, but generally a zip tie or something simple around will allow you to return it straight back to where you want it, and there are twin locking screws here. At the back, there is a butt hook and a recoil pad, which fits with spacers to adjust length of pull. On the underside, there's a Picatinny rail to add either a monopod, or you can use this with a soft rear bag, which is my preference when the positional situation allows that. You can also see here, there are quick release stud anchor points, and these are on both sides of the rifle. The recoil pad is grippy in the shoulder. It's about 20 millimeters thick and length of pull can be adjusted with spacers on underneath it. This stays well locked in position and it's comfortable regardless of where it fits into your shoulder pocket with no edges at the top or bottom to dig in. This barrel is 24 inches or 610 millimeters with a one in eight inch twist. Muzzle diameter is 22 millimeters or 0.867 inches. It's double 18 by one for a moderator or brake. The single stage trigger came from the factory breaking at 644 grams or one pound seven ounces, which I thought was excellent for a precision rifle. The three stage safety is forward for fire. The bolt is locked in the rearmost position or there is a center position for full bolt operation, but safe.
these are the Mauser M18 groups on paper at 100 meters. That American Hunter shot extremely well with just one splitting up the group there. Not so bad, the 140. Again, the 120 grain copper non-toxic GMX shot okay actually for a hunting round in full copper. 147 ELDM, which has been a great bullet in many other rifles. Worked quite well, but again, a flyer. The Norma ammunition pretty much sprayed away. And that's actually been good ammunition in other rifles, it just doesn't suit this barrel. Well, I'm here today shooting at 850 metres. It's a lovely day, it's very little wind, just a bit of spin drift to contend with and the slightest breeze at the targets. So uh, I've brought with me the um, long-awaited Mauser M18 long range in the Oryx chassis and this is a 6.5 Creedmoor so Head, 8 o'clock, 7.30 to 8. Hit, just below centre, 8 o'clock. Just over the top of it, 12.30. Hit, 1 o'clock, just on the edge. Hit. Hit, centre. Hit. So seven o'clock edge. You'll see handling the rifle, it's a three lug bolt, it's push feed, and it's got a 60 degree lift. So that bolt never rises above perpendicular. It's really good because you can flick it with the back of your fingers, you can grab it with your whole hand. The bolt travel is slightly longer than it needs to be, but it doesn't seem to matter. And the bolt itself, you can handle it quite roughly and it won't jam as it's being pushed forward. You can put a single round in the injection port, press it down into the magazine, and it will load through there as well as taking out the gun. And that will now load to the chamber. YouTube videos don't want to be too long because people don't watch them that long. So if you want to know, you know, details and specifications I maybe haven't listed that are available on the website, there's plenty on the Mauser website. This is about my opinion because I've shot so many rifles competitive to this. And here's what I think about the M18 long range chassis. Number one, the barrel at 24 inches is, a, is an optimum length because you get great velocity out of it, but you're not creating too many handling problems. With it being screw cut for a break or mod, you've got all the accessibility you need to accessorize it to, to, to control the recoil characteristics as you want them. M-lock on the underside of the fore end gives you a lot of uh, options for what bipods or rests you want to use. The fore end, you know, it's not going to go through the narrowest kind of barricade stops, but it's very stable and because it's flat on the underside, it'll hold on a rest bag well. You can see here, I'm using it on a set of, um, on a set of bog sticks. This is clamped in here and of course with it being aluminium with plastic sidewalls, you can put plenty of gripping force on it 
and it's, it's totally solid with great windage adjustability and vertical too. The barricade stop is solid. It's maybe not as deep as some, but you know, generally speaking, that's gonna hit a hard edge. You're gonna push into it. Barrel weight, I think is ideal. It's not super, super heavy, but at 22 millimeters diameter, it's got that consistency to maintain the groups and firing strings through 10 or 12 shots. Uh, in terms of performance on paper, this has been really good actually, because I've actually shot sub half MOA groups with it at 200 meters on particularly good days in the snow a couple of months ago. Um, but what else do I like about it? I like the magazine system. I do like the twin column layout. You can clip them in the top, either in the mag or through the ejection port. And the other thing is, if you've got you know, rounds stored on the side, an emergency round you drop in the ejection port will chamber immediately off the follower. The Picatinny rail, you know, that's de rigueur. If you haven't got a 20 MOA Picatinny rail these days, you're just not in the action. This has been fine. Um, I've actually used this rifle as a test bed for this new Carles um, uh, K525i scope. I only use that on rifles I'll trust because I won't use a scope that's new to me on a rifle I haven't already proven. The bolt handle, travel on it is maybe 10 millimeters longer than it needs to be for a, you know, a mid-action cartridge like the Creedmoor or 308. But travel is very slick and because it's a long bolt, bolt shaft itself and a long bolt stroke, you'll see I can't jam it. It doesn't matter how aggressive and you know, please don't criticize me for being aggressive because you want guns treated hard so that when you give them an easy life, you know they're gonna stand up to that. And here's the thing, if I rack that bolt outwards like that, that would jam a lot of rifles. Well, it doesn't on this one. So that's a long handle. That can often be a downside, but it gives you plenty of upward leverage. You can flick it up with your fingers, no problem. And it's not too long relative to the shaft itself that it, it, it stutters and staggers. Feed performance ejection, as you've seen on the video, is absolutely perfect. Uh, I'm very happy with that. <laughs> it's a shame you've got to take the cheap piece out to get the bolt out, but you know, how often do you need to take your bolt out? How often are you going to be cleaning the rifle during the day? It's not a huge issue. The cheap piece uh, is a little bit broader than I would prefer. It is not windy, you know, it's not laterally adjustable, so I would probably build it up with a slightly firmer edge to go under my cheekbone with a rifle mine. But I quite like the Oryx chassis. It's not it's not trying to be everything to everybody. It's fairly streamlined, it's fairly efficient, and it's um, pleasant in use. I like being able to get my hand in here and clamp it into my shoulder. Not so much on the sticks, but prone, that's very important. And because the butt pad is quite firm, it's not too squidgy, I can load into that bipod with my shoulder pressure and the gun feels stable. That's the second fact about this bolt handle being light and easy to use that when you're trying to get a shot away quickly without disturbing the position you've built, whether it be kneeling, sitting, standing, whatever, this is not affecting the rifle's position because it's just so lightweight. And I'm, you know, I shoot all sorts of rifles every day of the week, but some of them just work naturally. And you can probably tell on camera, I'm just talking away and that one is just, there's just nothing to it. Uh, the trigger is, I like the trigger. It's not, you know, it's not a match quality trigger, but it's certainly predictable and I had no problem making standing shots with it just now. The guard's got plenty of space for gloves and it's got a nice aluminium edge to it so you know nothing's going to damage the trigger and there's also plenty of clearance at the rear so that gloves and things like that aren't going to foul behind the trigger. You're not you know touching other objects you're only touching the blade and with that extra slight bit of reach 70 millimeters to the throw to the grip unlike a lot of ARs where your finger's almost halfway through this one is still on the pad of your trigger finger, which I really, really appreciate. So I think that pretty much sums up the M18 to me. Mauser are well known for being a great sporting rifle manufacturer. Well, when the M18 came out in a sporting rifle format, I was immediately impressed with it and thought the bolt operation of the standard rifle was one of the best in the business. I would say that this with the 60 degree lift is probably the equal for the long range precision world. I, I, it's probably the favorite I've used. Um, I like the Oryx stock. Okay, it's not got quite as much positional adjustability as some, but perhaps more for the prone shooters or you know the, the varmint shooters, field shooters, as opposed to the more barricade or multi-positional orientated shooters. There are some pros in this in the favor of this one as a, as a pair to something like the MDT ACC. Um, yes, so, I actually really like this rifle. It's one of those rifles I've enjoyed shooting. It's delicate to touch, and when you're using it, you can see 
bullet impact well, recoil transit is very linear, and of course, the upside to the fact that you know you can't bore sight it because the recoil pad is high, the cheap piece gets in the way of the bolt. Well, the upside to that is the fact that that's what gives you great positional stability when you're shooting it. So ignoring all these work site, you know, workshop tasks, putting them to one side, the gun is a better gun to shoot. So although you might criticize not being able to get a cleaning rod smoothly through it, blah, blah, blah. Actually, I don't care about those things because I want a gun that's better to shoot. Taking that off to take the bolt out, you know, relative to the fact I've got that linear recoil transit into my shoulder and the gun has got very, very little muzzle flip at all, especially with a brake or moderator on it, is the upside. So, I hope you've enjoyed watching. Thank you very much for watching. Please like my channel, please subscribe to my channel, click the notification bell and share it with your friends because the more viewers, the more subscribers we get, the more comments we get, the more videos you'll see. And the next one, hopefully, is going to be about this Carles K525i scope. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.